Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Rago. I'm Sean. And uh, we're just gonna kick off our little mini series where we ask Sean questions about all the North Kites. We'll do some comparisons. We're uh, down here in Florida right now. He's letting me demo a bunch of the gear, which I appreciate, dude. Shredding. So, so I'm uh, a little green with a lot of the North Kites, but making a point to get to know them better. And uh, today we're just gonna do a little bit of uh, research. So we're gonna do a little comparison with the, uh, the Orbit with the Reach, right? Yeah, sounds good. So, uh, so to kick things off, I guess the first question, can you sum each of these kites up like in a paragraph, like what is the kite and kind of who it's for? Yeah, um, Orbit, I'd say it's a five strut, big air kite, lots of low end power. But the most unique thing about this kite is for something that's five struts and so boosty with a lot of lift, it actually loops really, really good for the style of kite it is. Yeah, and part of that is because of like the, the the two stage arc right and then they have the swept wing tips so it's kind of it's loft but it, it turns really fast exactly yeah it doesn't it's not like a hundred percent delta shaped kite with super pointy wing tips which is actually why i think it's extremely maneuverable because usually when you have a kite that's strict strict big air which the orbit definitely is but i'd say it's probably a little more maneuverable than than pure delta kites five star kites that are a little a little hard to loop because they tend to hug the outside of the window when you're looping mm -hmm. them where the orbit gives you a nice consistent yank you know and i'd say it's it's probably not as hard as a pull as like the pulse or even the reach but the orbit has a lot more low end power and loftiness so it's quite surprising that how it can catch you even when you only go like 15 feet high and then a kite like the reach is an incredible kite all around kite it really does everything and that's a kite that you can go foiling on when it's blowing like 12 to 15 or you can go throw mega loops on when it's blowing 30 plus on the seven eight and nine meter reach i had a great session on the seven meter reach in like 33 to 45 knots in the outer banks during hurricane isaiah and usually i'm kind of hesitant to ride a seven just because i'm not super dialed on sevens because it's such a small kite you know, you're gonna over loop it, but you go so high that it's all good if you over loop it. You just have to take a moment, look at the kite, and either steer it left or right, whichever way is above your head to safety. So I'm really excited to get more dialed on the sevens and stronger wind, because I've just been kind of like an eight and a nine kind of guy. But I think the real deal mega loops are gonna happen on sevens and eights. So comparing some specific points, I guess we'll start with the, uh, the ever loaded question of like which kite jumps better. Uh, yeah. I know different kites take different approaches, so, can you help everybody watching kind of figure out what they can expect from the orbit with jumping, what they can expect with the reach with jumping, so they know what they're getting into with either kite? Yeah, definitely uh, the orbit, you're gonna feel like you have a lot more power right away. And the bar pressure on the north kites are really light, which is awesome. Cause you can handle the strong wing kite loops a lot easier cause it doesn't feel like the bar is trying to rip your elbows out. So, you know, it like feels moderate, and then all of a sudden you go to send a jump and you're like, whoa, you get surprised you weren't expecting to go that high. So the light bar pressure for some people that are coming off of kites with stronger bar pressure, it takes a little bit getting used to. But after a couple of weeks, they're really gonna be thankful of their decision switching because of the bar pressure. And I think it just helps in the kite loop tricks. The Orbit is just a super user-friendly kite that boosts really huge. You're definitely gonna feel a lot more power on the low end with it. And I'd say it's probably a, just a wee bit slower than the reach so the reach sits back in the wind window just a little bit more so when you go to turn it it's actually getting impacted by the wind quite a bit more and it shoots the 12 really nice during your kite loops and even when you're just sending the jump but the orbit really shoots hard to the edge of the window which is why it goes a little higher and gives you a little more hang time so it's always trying to go up so as soon as you loop the kite and let the bar out it just rifles over your head makes it easy for the catch now the loop is kind of smooth, like it's always surprising at how, how uh, smooth it, it became because you'll feel pretty powered up and you go to throw the loop and you're amped up before you do it. And then you throw it and you're like, whew, man, that was controlled and smooth. It was perfect, you know? And then the reach, right when that came out, I was obsessed looping that kite and I still am. The nine meter is a really, really good looping kite. But just for the regular jumps, you know, it almost makes up for the fact that it has a little bit less low end than a kite like the Orbit. It makes up for it with its quickness and its snappiness because you can correct yourself super quick and just put the kite in the wind window anywhere you want immediately. Direct input. I, uh, <laughs> I, did, I did notice that I actually got to try the, um, the first generation, like the, uh, the Orbit and like, 
it was like in Morocco and it was like 45 knots and we were like on just like sevens and some guys were going out on like tens and that kite could really like handle a lot of wind. Like, oh yeah. You could really take that kite in a lot of wind. Um, so for like, for the average person, I guess going out, what I'm, what I'm getting out of this, it sounds like kind of like you would expect the orbit. It's a little more specialty. So it, it does jump a bit bigger. It's a little more suited towards somebody for, for big air, obviously as oh, a yeah. big air kite. Definitely. Yeah. And then the, the reach, it, it's interesting. You mentioned you feel like the orbit might have a bit more low end. I've, I've heard some other people kind of uh, praise the the reach for its low end, but I, for sure. But I guess the uh, the first gen orbit and the second gen orbit are, are different in that sense, right? Because they brought some of that low end back into the second gen orbit. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and the uh, the second generation, the 2021, is just a lot lighter, so way less Dacron, different style Dacron during the trailing edge. Uh, the 12 meters and up all use lighter bladder material as well. Oh, okay. And they also just illuminated Dacron in a lot of the kite. The 2020 was built like a tank, really, really sick kite. Um, definitely feel a bit more low end in 2021. And the steering response is still right there. And I feel like when the wind is a lot lighter is where you really notice the little differences. Because in the strong wind, you might not notice that, oh, this kite doesn't have any low end because nobody's going to notice that there's weak low end when it's blowing 30 For 40 sure. Up. It's when you're trying to stay up wind in 15 miles an hour, that's where you that can tell. Makes a difference. So with a kite that's more agile and quicker, you kind of make up for it. Because say, okay, you can jump high on the boosty kite because you're steering it to 12 moderately or you're just steering it to 12 as hard as you can. Now, when you go with the reach and steer it to 12 as hard as you can, the fact that the kite whips to 12 even faster, you're almost gonna make up the height difference that you would have lost because the reach has less low end power. You're still getting right there close to it just because of how fast you can whip this thing to 12, which is why sometimes it's better to go on the right size kite instead of being super overpowered. You know, I mean, sevens, eights, and nines, yeah, you can get way too overpowered on any of those kites or nine where you know where it's just super hard to steer to 12 but if you just go down to the smaller size you can hold your edge you can ride hard you can ride fast and you can whip the kite to 12 o'clock because the harder you steer it to 12 the harder you're gonna get ripped out of the water if you're super nice oh we're gonna do a nice little jump and you sand it you go and you're gonna come up nice if you're riding hard and you crank the bar hard you're gonna get ripped out of the water but at the same time you can't just get your speed load your edge and crank the bar because there's a delicate line because you know if you if you steer it too hard when the kite's say at 10 or 2 and you're getting ready for your jump you can steer it too hard where the kite's going to fall back a little bit so you get your uh, a lot of distance out of your jump i know we're going off but this is cool stuff too so no, you, get, great. you know you get like a little more distance maybe accidentally out of your jump so the trick is like when you're going to load up your jump and this is what i really like about the bar pressure on the orbits and the reach you know you could be riding and you're holding your edge okay and you're feeling pretty good i let the bar out an inch or two and then i keep edging and then i let the bar out even more and i edge out even harder so i'm loading up the front lines putting even more slack into the back lines so my goal is to not have the power all the way down here before i jump it's to keep riding faster edge harder let it out edge harder let it out so eventually the power that i felt here now i have the bar all the way out and i'm lit so when you go to steer the kite up it's going to stay on the edge of the window more than falling back because as soon as the kite starts to fall back in the window you're going to get a nice distance jump but if you can edge hard enough to load the kite up and send it hard while keeping it kind of on the edge of the window then you get the difference between height and distance on your jumps cool man i uh, i appreciate the insights on the kites yeah brother awesome and if you guys if you guys found this video helpful um please hit that subscribe button give it a thumbs up leave a comment if you got any questions and uh, don't forget to follow sean here on instagram uh, Sean underscore Bennett? Yep, Sean underscore Bennett. Cool, we'll catch you guys next time.